Uh, it's a live stream. It's a live stream. Live stream. Live stream, it's better than ice cream, but not really, because ice cream is the most delicious food in the world. And if you don't like ice cream, I don't need that kind of negativity in my life. Because I have a powerful lust for eating ice cream all day long and all night long. What's up, fish tank people? <laughs> stolen. The stolen intro. Oh, I forgot to turn on the other light. It's all dark in here today. We don't have any studio lighting today. We have mood lighting. What's up, everybody? How's it going? Good to see you. It's a glorious Wednesday here where the snow has stopped. Woo! The snow has stopped for a minute, a hot minute. We're going to have a clear skies today and clear skies tomorrow, and then... Snowpocalypse shall return for Friday, for Saturday, for Sunday, for the foreseeable future. And they're saying all the way until uh, Valentine's Day. And if you guys don't even know, Valentine's Day is coming up. Think about your fish tank people. Fish, think about your fish tank friends. Think about fish tankery and fish tank nonsense. All right, guys. Um... Somebody start a countdown in the chat for a like spike. If you guys don't know what a like spike is, we're going to hit the button, the like button, when, um, who's, who's at computer? I think, uh, I see Alyssa in the chat. Maybe Alyssa will do a five, four, three, two, one. We'll hit the like spike. I'm going to go turn on that light over there. So get ready to do the like spike. All right, we're back. Did anybody count down and do a like spike? Oh, no one did it while I was gone. Oh. The delay is that long? The delay is that long. I've gone and already turned on the light. And it's still broadcasting. Man. But I tell you this much. For those people out there that are members, I bet you don't have as much of a delay of a monumental delay. What is that? Like 30 seconds? <laughs> well, we'll see if anybody hit the like button or not. And we'll find out. We'll find out. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, we'll find out. Somebody will have to verify for me because it's Wednesday. You know, I'm not, I'm, uh, you know, Mondays I might be on the ball. Fridays I might sort of be on the ball, but Wednesdays are... Wednesdays are super fun, everybody. It's a lot going on around here. You know what I mean? There's a lot going on on Wednesdays. I hear my my daughter crying in the background. She's three months old and already teething. So, three, two, one, hit the like spike. <laughs> Who even knows if that even works? It probably doesn't even work anymore. But, um,. Let's go back up to 14. I like 14. Why not? Uh, but either way, uh, thanks, everybody, for showing up today. We have a pretty mellow turnout here today, which makes me think makes me think that we should go straight to the video. Because the 54 of you that showed up here right out the gate, you know what you guys deserve? Ice cream. Yeah. Fish tank style ice cream. Uh, this video is brought to you by 
ice cream. Delicious, nutritious ice cream. I'm realizing I should probably nah, I'm I think I'm gonna stay over here in the bottom left. I think that's where I'm gonna I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna stay right over here. I'm gonna make this look more like a signature down here. And then people will be like, I can't read your name down there. <laughs> and I'll be like, it's a stylized effect, everybody. Don't worry about it. It's a stylized effect. Uh, but anyhow, the progress that's going on here has to do with the 150-gallon Neo Caradina shrimp tank and not one, but two guppies. There's a male and a female now. I'm super enthusiastic about the fact that there's a male, there's a female, and they seem to be getting along, if you know what I'm talking about. They might be doing a little bit of the old, uh, you know, getting ready to breed and uh, cut loose some live bears. Oh, buddy, I'm pretty excited about it. I hope they, um, I hope they do breed. I would like to. I, I, I've always wanted to start a guppy colony with literally two fish. I've always wanted to do that, and I had two guppies before. If you guys don't recall, um, I had a male, I had a female, and the male was just a little out of sorts. So I put him in uh, timeout, and then he disappeared disappeared like a ghost I have no idea where he went and um, he's probably he's probably you know he's probably wandering the halls like a little guppy ghost fish just like Woo you know being scary and being creepy and you know generally the kinds of things that ghost fish do they they creep around and be creeps you know do that kind of stuff but um, happy to say that I got a mail from Alyssa, a beautiful little kind of cobra endler. You know, he's got some yellow, he's got some black, he's got some little colors to him, nice little spade tail. And, um, so hopefully they'll be breeding and doing that kind of thing. And then we'll just be able to go, Hey, this started out as two and now it's a billion <laughs> once they're uncountable. But I have discussed this a few times. The uh, I discussed this a, a few times over in the live stream uh, that one of the new tanks that's going in. Uh, I think I did a preview of one of the new tanks that's going in. It's a 120 gallon, custom built aquarium. Pretty exciting stuff. Uh, but that tank is going to be set up for bamboo shrimps. Uh, those bamboozler shrimps are going to be in there and. Um, you know, getting pretty excited for those. But one of the one of the things about that is that I do need a high flow tank with um, low light, essentially. Um, so I got to set up the environment for that. Now this 150 right here is getting just overpopulated with driftwood and uh, Anubias and stuff like that. So I made the decision of going like, well, if I'm going to set up this bamboo tank, the bamboo shrimp tank, right? I'm just going to gather up all the Anubias and start d dropping it into that 120. And I'm happy to say it's working out pretty well because I have an astounding amount of Anubias that I did. I hadn't even really uh, been keeping track of. And um, so it's really filling up that 120. And Friday's show, I'll actually be, you know, I won't be like live aquascaping, but I'll film it like this. And uh, we'll look at the aquascape of the, uh, the bamboo shrimp and we'll see how it's coming along. Uh, for that tank, uh, but it is filling up nicely, and I think it's going to work out quite well. A bunch of this stuff in the 150, like you couldn't even see all of this bam, uh, all of this uh, Anubias that was in here and stuff. So I'm happy to get it out. I'm really going to rescape and move some of the plants around. I'm not going to say that this is going to be Dutch style because I've done Dutch style tanks in the past and. To be really honest, they eventually kind of bore me because you have to do these giant trims and, um, you know, keep everything like super manicured. And, and when I did them, they didn't have like a, a lot of flow to it the way that I want the tank to kind of flow, look around and, you know, have stuff in the back and stuff in the front and things like that. Um, and then you don't want to, you don't have any rocks and I've got these really big Sierra stones in here that are super awesome. So I want to be able to feature those a little bit and, um, let them, you know, let them shine a little bit because you guys know I like my rocks. I like my hardscape. I like my hardscape fancy and I like my hardscape froggy. And <laughs> we got both of that going on in here. Um, but 
I am happy to say that uh, it is coming quite uh, coming along quite well, and um, you know it's definitely going to fill up the 120 easily because it's just got a ton of stuff in it at this point, and uh, just kind of moving along with my plan. And uh, I did post a video the other day that was reminding people that like one of the big things uh, with you know, aquascaping or fish tanks and that kind of stuff is you do have to have a lot of patience. And this is a perfect example. Uh, as we move along and do stuff, um, you know, I, I think a lot of people out there shoot a lot of YouTube videos and stuff like that, that, um, give you the impression that, uh, they just, you just kind of slap stuff together in an afternoon and then here's the finished product. Um, I think a good example of that would be sort of those home remodel shows that, you know, in a half an hour episode or something like that, they go from demolition to planning to repair to the full construction. And then it's already staged and it has all the furniture and all that kind of stuff in it. Um, you know, that it, and it leaves kind of an impression for most people out there that they're like, man, I don't, I don't understand. Like I'm, I'm not getting where I need to be. Like, you know, my, my, my tank looks terrible. When one of the big issues is, is that like time is the big thing that you're, that you haven't gotten in, you know, like maybe you got good substrate, you got some good plants, you got good water quality, you got all those things happening for you, you got good light, you know, you got all those things happening for you. And it's like, well, my tank looks terrible. It's like, yeah, let it grow in, let it grow in and it's going to be great. It's going to be good. So, um, you know, I do on this show and, uh, with my videos and stuff like that, I try to kind of remind people, you know, try to give people just a little bit of a reminder that you got to be patient. You got to spend some time and just let it chill, let it marinate, let it do its thing. And, um, you know, I hope that that helps people out, you know, but maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Let's see. We got a question here in the chat from Nathan Kotas. Uh, my 20 gallon long has Cobra Endler's Pepper Corydoras. Water has 8.4 pH, 14 degrees GH, 10 degrees KH. Does anyone think cherry shrimp would survive slash breed in that water? Um, yeah, most likely, yes. Um, cherry shrimp, so the neocaridinas that are in here, so those little bright red, the little bright red buggers you see uh, shrimping around in this water, uh, they have a pretty wide variance on what they can do. Uh, like the type, as long as they have good, clean water and stuff like that, they'll they'll be fine. The GH and KH there are kind of spot on. They do need a little bit higher than, um, you know, crystal shrimp, for instance. But uh, I think they should be fine as long as your pH, you know, being that high is a little bit high. But uh, I wouldn't be that concerned about it as long as you keep it stable. You know, so if it's not making any kind of big pH swings, you're going to be, you know, uh, you're going to be pretty good. I, I would assume, you know, in my experience, it's been fine. Um, and Nathan's asking, is that pinkish plant in the front flamingo crypt? Yes. That is a cryptocrine, um, when ver um, version pink flamingo. Uh, so the street name's kind of the pink flamingo or pink panther. Some people call it that. Uh, but it actually is a Wendetti eye that is just a, a, a strange variant, you know. Um, you know, it's a strange variant that um, Stefan Hummel came up with. They, you know, as they were out there in, at Dennerle in Germany, they were um, basically you know, breeding so much Wendetii and they're kind of just going with, you know, kind of cross breeding and that kind of stuff to, to get some good variation. And, um, they noticed this like really pink, weird one. And, um, so they singled that one out and, um, basically started growing it. And one of the reasons that it's pretty rare is not so much that, um, not so much that it's like difficult to grow. It just is a variant that grows really slowly. And on top of it, it's difficult to replicate as like a tissue culture or anything like that. That is where the big hubbub is. So it's a little more expensive because of those reasons. So it's not so much that, you know, it's rare because it's like made of diamonds or something or anything like that. It's just a slower grower and it also is uh, pretty difficult to tissue culture. So, uh, a lot of plants out there like, um, Oh, let me turn on the arrow. 
boom, arrow. So like this plant right over here, uh, that Styragani repens that's right down there. I don't know if the coloring on the video looks a little blown out. Sorry, I did a terrible job editing the video today. Sorry about that. Looks a little contrasty. But anyhow, so where the arrow's pointing right down here, this plant is super easy to tissue culture. So they, they can do that and replicate it over and over and over again uh, with a lot of success. Whereas this little pink plant right here, they have a lot of problems with um, just doing a straight up tissue culture with it on a regular basis. Um, this big red plant back here is actually, this, this is a variation of that. So this is actually Alternanthera Renekii mini. So this is actually just the little dwarf version. Um, so it's, you know, it's essentially the same plant. It just happens to be a varietal uh, that is growing super small. So, you know, just to give you an idea that there are a lot of plants out there that are actually the same plant, but it's just a variation of it. So think about it like a black lab versus a chocolate lab versus a golden retriever, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, you basically got the same dog. You just got all these weird variations or even just like a lab versus a chihuahua. You know, it's like they're, they're all dogs, you know, they're all, what is it? Canis, whatever. I don't know. I can't even remember what the Latin name is for dogs. Nobody's ever, um, nobody's ever, uh, quizzing me on Latin terms for dogs. So I, Probably just eliminated that from my brain because it's not really all that important. <laughs> Why am I laughing at myself? I'm laughing at my own my own weirdness. I'm sorry about that, guys. I'm sorry about that. Um, let's see here. Alyssa says technically it's a guppy endler hybrid. Yes, that little uh, that little guppy that's in there swimming around. Um, yeah, it's an endler. It's like a cobra endler and a guppy had a baby. Very, very much up my alley if we're talking about a fish. You know, I mean, if we're talking about endlers, oh, buddy. Talking about some specific guppies and stuff like that, definitely right up my alley. I love them fish. That's, um, you know, that's one of those things. You know, it's definitely, definitely one of those things. Uh, Nathan says, I wish I could stay, but alas, have class and have to go. Uh, ready? Uh, really like stopping in while there weren't many people here. I'll be back if the class ends early. Ooh, Creedmoor says Canis Lupus. Ooh, I think you're right. I think you're right on that. Yeah, I think it's Canis Lupus. Uh, Ooh, Cherokee says I've got your stream going on my TV and the phone. Ooh, it's got me on the big screen. Ah, you know what's funny about that? I was actually looking that up the other day. Um... You know, the amount or like what. So it doesn't tell me who, but it just tells me how many people watch on what type of device. So it, it'll just say like cell phone or TV or computer or um, console. So this is a surprising amount of people that um, take in YouTube via their video game console, which I find to be a little bit interesting. Uh, but. I will say this, the cell phone segment is gigantic compared to any um, of the other seg the other groups, the other groups that are out there. So uh, I appreciate people watching on the TV. If you feel like it's got to be that big for you, I appreciate your style. I like your style. It's a good move. Um, I had to take YouTube off of my TV, though, out in the living room. I just, we were end up like watching too much. Well, I don't know that I end up like watching too much YouTube. Yeah. I guess maybe I could still have it out there because I have, I have the internet. We all, we watch on that TV is the internet. So like Netflix and Amazon, we don't have Hulu, but, um, I think I had it playing too much on the TV. Now I typically have it playing on my cell phone cause I'm normally just listening to YouTube videos, which is funny because I don't even really watch that many YouTube videos, but I just have them playing in the background. <laughs> So like a perfect example would be like Linus Tech Tips, right? Like I'll just listen to them reviewing some kind of uh, piece of equipment that they got in. And uh, I'm like not even watching the video. But, you know, um, if you have uh, YouTube Premium, then you're, you're able to do that because you can just turn the screen off and just have the audio play. So I actually do that a lot where I just have it um, 
uh, I'll just have YouTube just audio playing, you know, and it'll just go to the next whatever recommended video. So, oh, Mellow Moogle says, gently tickle the like button. Get in there deep and touch the like button. I appreciate you if you do. Um, oh my gosh, we have a new member. It feels like it's been ages since we had a new member. Uh, Mike's Tetra is coming in hot. Ooh, Mike's Tetra is coming in hot. And I got to say a big shout out to Smeal Kapoor. Um, probably completely say your screen name wrong, but uh, shout out to Smeal Kapoor. Uh, wait, where'd my thing go? Oh, there it is. Um, who's our newest Patreonizer. If you guys don't know, uh, we do have a Patreon page where people contribute to keeping this show on the air uh, and making videos and traveling around. As I have mentioned recently, uh, the the most the the newest up and coming travel extravaganza is going to be this weekend, um, February 9th, two thousand nineteen. I shall be road tripping. Uh, all the way down to Eugene, Oregon, uh, where we'll be um, attending, where I'll be attending the Willamette Valley Aquarium Society, which I'm very excited to go down there. It sounds like fun. Uh, we're going to go to a local store, and I say we because I'm bringing a special guest. And by the way, this special guest is not Corey from Aquarium Co-op. As far as I know, he's going to stay home and play in the snow because it's going to be snowing like crazy, and I'm going to road trip in the snow because I'm nuts. And I drive a really old truck, so, you know, it's a really old truck. I guess we'll just put it that way. That, you know, what's the worst that could happen? It's a really old truck. <laughs> uh, but, but, but everybody, but, um, what we're going to be doing is... Going to a store, and uh, hopefully we're going to visit somebody's fish room. I'm not sure yet if we're going to be able to do that or not. Um, I gotta send a, I gotta send a shout. I gotta send a shout out to uh, the Willamette Valley to see if somebody wants me to come by and um, visit their fish room. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um, and see if they want us to come by that. But I'll be doing a, a fish room videos while I'm down there with the special guest. The old special guest. I might as well tell you guys. It's going to be Aqua Pros. It's going to be Mike from Aqua Pros. He's got a big old YouTube channel with some very helpful YouTube videos on it, I will say. Uh, he's got a great library on some of the uh, you know bacteria stuff. Uh, he does a lot of aquascaping. Uh, and he's got a whole new place. I haven't been to his new place yet. I've been to his old place a couple times, and uh, I'm going to go to his new place and check it out. I'm probably going to sleep on his floor because it seems like a, a big waste of money to buy a hotel room uh, and get up early and drive home on Sunday <laughs> in the snow. You know what I mean? So, um, But it should be fun. Uh, we've got another new member, with the Zombie Drummers, coming in, always being, always being supportive of the show. Appreciate it. Thank you much. Um, let's see. Um, Creedmoor was asking, how do you discourage aerial rooting? My hygrocoriumbosa always ends up unsightly. Uh, well, the thing is, is that aerial roots are once a plant has extended so far beyond its reach of its root system. Uh, so you think about it this way. Like if you were nine feet tall right uh and uh as you guys know with super tall people they stand up too fast they get lightheaded a little bit of dizzy because all there's not enough blood all the way up at the top of their head because there's just a limitation to what the human frame can handle um you know once they're already standing up they're all right and all that kind of stuff but i'm just trying to give you guys a parallel that you might understand plants do that once they have reached so a good example of that that is in this video is right here. See how tall this is growing right here? Same with this. Uh, cup, um, uh, did I say, almost say Kabamba? That's not Kabamba. Um, Dewey. 
I've completely forgotten I've spaced the name. But uh, you can see how long and tall this is growing. And we have new shoots even down here starting to, to pop out. To discourage the aerial rooting, trim your plant. So the tops of these are actually going to get trimmed off and replanted. Plant the stem back down there. Then we'll trim this middle portion out. Down, basically got a little stub. The middle portion I'll put all the way down in the sump, right? And let that sprout into a new plant. Then the top portion will replant in the substrate. And we'll end up and we'll get ourselves what we like to call propagation. Oh, I should, uh, hold on. Let me add source text. Ooh, and it just puts up a giant title, title text. Is that what it's saying? Oh, here we go. Hold on. Propagation. Except the, the text is just, it's too big. Do we have to resize this whole thing? I don't even like that. Let's go with a different text type. Um, where's the size? Opacity, outline. Why is this so big? Why? Mm -hmm. Let me see. Maybe I can... Oh, I have to do that. Whoa. Whoa, what happened? It disappeared. Well, that didn't help at all. Okay, never mind. Let's stop trying to do text during the show. How about that? <laughs> Yikes. All right. Well, I just wanted to put propagation up on the screen, but I guess that's not going to happen. Sorry, guys. I don't know. I tried, and you saw me fail. So that's life. Um, but that's how you would discourage aerial roots. They do, you know, it is one of those things. The aerial roots don't look that great, but the aerial roots are serving a purpose. You know, once that plant is super tall, it's not going to be able to travel nutrients all the way from the substrate up to the top of the plant. So what it does, sends out some aerial roots. So it makes it even easier for it to absorb uh, nutrients from the water column, which mo uh, some, you know, there are plants that don't need aerial roots in order to um, absorb nutrients from the water column. But even those will grow aerial roots because it just makes it easier for that plant to just essentially dominate and pull up a ton of nutrients. It's doing well. It needs a lot of nutrients. So that's what it's going to keep. Um, that's what it's going to keep you know, doing within its own right. You know what I mean? It's going to keep doing that because it's just going to make it more, I don't know, what's the word I'm looking for here? Prolific or something? You know, it's going to take over eventually. <laughs> take over the whole tank. Something, you know, if you had a tank running for a really long time, eventually something would win, basically. Basically put. Uh, over time, eventually one plant would win out, you know, and that's just kind of how it goes. Devin is here asking, hey, question, what plant would you do in a 10-gallon tank with no CO2, Finex Stingray as the light? I want a carpeting plant and a background plant for a shrimp tank uh, with dwarf sage and some crypts. Wendetti eye. Uh, dwarf sage would be fine. Um, and I'm wondering... I was somebody I figured somebody was going to ask me about these lilies but nobody has and it seems strange it seems strange to me that people would be seeing all those lilies growing around in there and be like and no one even asked no one even asked about them but let me uh I'll make up a quick link for come on now this does take a second. <laughs> I have to make like a better link. Otherwise, YouTube doesn't let me uh, put it up into the chat correctly. It freaks out. There we go. Uh, so there's a link for the lilies. Now, um, I didn't see um, Dwarf Sagittaria, which will be right here. I actually have a link for that. Um, I almost always say it wrong, but... That's fine, right? You guys know what I'm talking about because I'm going to give you guys a link that you'll be able to just click on. Uh, and it'll take you over to the Aquarium Co-op. That's our jammy around here. The Aquarium Co-op is our affiliate sponsor. So 
I will remind you guys that uh, if you do go over to our affiliate sponsor and buy stuff, it gives us a kickback. So some people will freak out. Uh, Tizzle Dexter says, my screen keeps freezing, so I'm only listening in, which may or may not be actually happening for everybody because a whole bunch of people dropped out uh, and left, which normally means something's wrong with YouTube. It's like about 40 people just left, (laughs) which means that probably something weird is going on on YouTube's end. Because I don't recall saying anything that would really freak out like 40 people. You know what I mean? But who knows? Maybe uh, maybe some really big channel just went live and they all left. But my guess would be that their screen keeps freezing. Because mine was even frozen over here when I clicked over to it. But it's telling me my broadcasting strength is fine. So maybe if there's like a really interesting part in the video that you guys miss, uh, you might be able to pop in. And rewatch it after it's been processed. Who knows? Um, Shelby Ray says, uh, Lilies, use the red arrow. Oh, I should use the red arrow. Yeah, you got a good point. They're right here. Right here. I'm kind of realizing that, like, this isn't all that great for the Lilies, this video. One right there. One right there. I gotta. I think I might have to advance the video. This isn't maybe the best part for the Lilies. Oh, yeah, there we go, right there. Oh, buddy. Let me pause it real quick. So, this right here, all these little, you know, like pond lily looking pads and stuff like that, that is all aquarium dwarf lilies. And uh, they are fabulous. I love them very much. And I feel like. I've been disrespecting them for a long time, letting them be behind all this other stuff that's been in front of them. Um, but they'll be much more of a feature moving along uh, with this tank. And, uh, you know, happy to say that I think I started out with one thing. Um, I basically had one, um, I think it was like one pot of uh, dwarf aquarium lilies. And uh, they did, gr- they're doing great. Uh, Devin's asking, are those lilies or tiger lotus? Tiger lotus is going to be a little bit different, but these would be lilies. Uh, but tiger lotus, you basically the same water parameters and they will do quite well. Um, you know, but the, as far as that, uh, small tank that you were talking about, um, the, the dwarf sag, I think will be great for that, um, and work out quite well. All right. Let's see. Tyrone Wiley says, I'm still lurking. I guess not anymore. <laughs> no more lurking. Get into the chat. Uh, Smeal Kapoor says, refreshed. It keeps freezing. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry, guys. Um, but they're, you know, tiger lilies and... Um, what am I thinking of here? Aquarium lilies and tiger lotus. They're very, very, they're going to be very, 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 very close. Um, one of the upsides with the tiger lotus, is there'll be a lot more red to them. Uh, they do have a lot more red and pretty cool, but you know, uh, I don't want more red in this tank. I've already got a lot. Uh, bonkers about Alice. How can I encourage my lilies to flower? Uh, you want to make sure that the pads are grown all the way up to the top, and then they'll they'll generally flower after a while. Um, I don't think I've ever I don't think I've ever gone into great lengths to like try and get them to flower. Um, so I don't know. And Shelby Ray says they um everybody keeps freezing. YouTube is having issues. Oh okay, that makes sense. Oh, Milo says uh, it's fine on your end. No lags or stutters. Okay, cool. Well, some people it's working. Some people it's not. Do, do, do. Oh, man, two streams in a row. Now I'm not getting notifications from James. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, you got to click the notification bell if you, uh, you want to get notified. So, you know. 
Uh, let me check out here real quick. I don't see any super chats for today. Okay, cool. Um, so let me scroll back down here to the bottom of the chat and uh, see what we got going on. It is Wednesday. It is the middle of the week. So I bet there's probably a lot of people out there that are, um, you know, they're having middle of the week syndrome. And maybe YouTube is having middle of the week syndrome also. Uh, Bracken is thinking of growing microsword immersed so I can get enough to plant later back into my tank. Does this seem like a good idea? Uh, you can do immersed grown stuff, but you know, you are going to have to convert it, you know, once, once it comes time to like put it into a tank. That's one of the reasons I don't rec recommend the dry start method. A lot of people will do the dry start method on their, uh, aquascapes because, uh, the plants will grow in pretty quickly if you don't have water in the tank because um, you have a free availability of CO2 in the air, the air that's out here. But I recommend people to just start a tank and just gas it with CO2. And if you don't have fish or anything in there, you're going to be fine. You could do like a wet start method. I, I don't know if there's that's the name for it, and it sounds kind of dirty, but... Either way, instead of doing the dry start method, you could do a wet start method, I guess. Maybe we'll just coin that here today, I guess. I don't know. I just gas the tank with CO2 before I add any fish or shrimp or snails even or anything like that um, and let plants just establish themselves really pretty rapidly. Uh, and you can kind of just go buck wild with the CO2 because it's not going to hurt your plants. Um, you know, you might drop your pH crazy, but... You know, don't go totally nuts. Do, do, do. Um, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. Whoa. Okay, let me... I have to move my chat over here because if I... Sorry. I'm like telling you guys what I'm doing. I have to move my chat over here because if I have to go over here to get a thing, like a link or something, um, I have to... It will like send my chat flying off into oblivion. It just basically will be behind anything else. Um, Gerson's asking thoughts on an Aquatech regulator. Now, um, I've used Aquatech regulators in the past, uh, with good success. Um, but I've also, you know, utilized some of those with bad success. So it, you know, regulators are kind of one of those things that, um, you could have a really good experience with it. You could have a really bad experience with it. Um, but I'm currently shooting a video about these regulators right here. Corey's carrying these, uh, and I'm currently working on some video, you know, that has a good explanation of like exactly what I'm looking for in a regulator and stuff like that. And some of the, the upside and downside of, uh, different brands that I've used and everything, it's turning into a monumental project at this point but um it uh that's the regular i'm using right now and i'm very happy with it for um a lot of good reasons and you know the aquatech ones i've used like they've worked um but they do have some pretty wonky design flaws that i don't think i would buy another one i don't think that i would buy another one at this point but you know, the CO2 art ones that I'm using right now, I'm very happy with, and they're actively doing what they're supposed to do. So it, does that mean it's a product that has zero faults? No, I mean, it just, I mean, you could buy an iPhone that could have a problem. You know what I mean? And it's not like iPhones are renowned for having issues or problems or, you know, being shipped broken or anything like that. Um, you know what I mean? So it's like it, there's no product out there that has a 100% perfect, you know, perfect usability and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So um, is it is it a perfect product? No, but it's it's good. It's a dang good setup, and um, I'm really enjoying it because I can expand onto it. That's one of the big deals. Um, I have the Aquatech regulator that has a six-way splitter. And that six-way splitter is, it does it work? Yeah, but um, it will not send the same pressure all the time. It constantly have to adjust all the needle valves on it because the way that it's built, 
Um, there's no way to like, if you open up this end, it drops the pressure on any of the other ones. So that's why I'm pretty happy with the CO2 art one is that it doesn't, you know, each tank has its own bubble counter and its own needle valve. And it's built onto a manifold that has that expandability that I really need. If you need just one individual, just one singular CO2 thing, it might be be a good idea to just go with an Aquatech because you might save a little bit of money. Um, but if you're like me and you know that you're going to have more than one tank running on CO2, that's kind of why I was happy to switch over to the CO2 art one is that I'm not having to constantly adjust um, the CO2 to every single tank. Like I can kind of set it and leave it and let it, let it do what it's supposed to do. Uh, John Gilman found a Neo shrimp with green fungus on it, removed it from my tank and put it into quarantine. Oh no. Um, green fungus on a uh, Neocaridina is the worst. Um, and I cannot remember off the top of my head exactly what it is or what the treatment is. Neocaridina green fungus. I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I have to, uh, Oh yeah, it's L-O-Biopsidae um, is bad news, very much bad news. And um, there's only one way I know how to treat for it. Um, yeah, sorry, I had to look it up, but um, I needed to remember what it is. But um, L-O-Biopsidae is the worst. It's the worst disease out there for... Um, well, really any shrimp, but neocaridinas are the ones that almost always have it. Um, it is the worst possible disease for shrimp. It's like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a cancer. I mean, let's just call it cancer period. Um, it is a very bad deal. And there's only one way to treat for it that I know of that I had to go all the way to Germany to find out, <laughs> find a cure that actually exists. There is a treatment for it. Um, you need to get methylene green and you need to apply that to the food, let it completely dry. Then they need to eat it. So it is kind of a pain to treat for it. Um, you know, most of the American guys don't know how to treat it, but people, um, you know, in Europe know how to treat it. And, uh, we, I literally was at a basement shop at a really fancy shrimp store in Germany in the basement. And uh, I had to get, we had to get a, uh, a translator to translate from German to English to have the conversation back and forth. And he was like, yeah, this is how you treat for it. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? And then he was like, yeah, here's our book. Here's my book where it shows you how to treat for it. In, it was in German, you know. Uh, but the translated PDF file will tell you about it. Um, it's the uh, methylene green instead of methylene blue. Uh, you need to apply that to their food, allow that to completely dry, and then make sure that they actually eat it. You have to; It has to be treated by them eating it and passing through their digestive tract and go that direction. That's how, the, uh, how, that's how you have to treat for it. Um, but it is definitely a good luck situation, and it is a nightmare. So... I'm very sorry to hear that. Um, if anybody out, if you bought those from somebody, um, you need to let them know. Maybe you need to let other people know. Um, it really is. Um, it is really. It just. Uh, yeah, you got to let people know. You got to let people know that somebody's selling, um, selling them shrimps. Got to let them know. Got to let somebody know. Mm. Oh, I got to move my chat back over here so I can read it better. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. Uh, Tizzle Dexter is asking, forgive me if you ever answered, in addition to aquariums, do you have a pond? Uh, I don't have a pond here, uh, but I do have the layout going for the pond here so for this coming next season we should have a pond here uh to be doing a bunch of pond stuff coming up in the spring because um it's too cold out right now for me to do it but i just got done 
uh, a couple months ago building a uh, building a pond up at uh, uh, Cole Robbie's house, uh, Corby, uh, Coopy. Uh, you know, you guys might know him as Corey, but uh, just got done um, building a pond up at his place. You know, um, when work comes up and you got work to do, that almost always uh, supplants my projects. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not independently wealthy. I have to work all the time, and Corey is one of my customers or employers or whatever you want to, however you want to put it. But that doesn't really have anything to do with the YouTube channel stuff because that's just literally, you know, the deal. Uh, let's see. Skirmisher's asking, why do you call Aquarium Co-op Corey uh, Kobe? <laughs> Kobe! Oh, Kobe! Uh... Kobe's my guy, man. He's my buddy. We hang out. We hang out. I call him Cole Robbie. Sometimes I call him uh, Corby. Sometimes I don't know. We just goofing around. We're buddies, so we have a good time. We have good times, and uh, you know, he's a big fan of uh, Hank Hill and stuff. And those guys are all hillbillies, so I figure we might as well just have a little bit of hillbilly fun. And we used to do a show called The Real Fish Talk, uh, which is basically like an hour and a half, two hours of us, uh, you know, answering fish questions and stuff like that, and. Um, people used to get super mad because we wouldn't talk about fish enough. Uh, but, uh, we had a great time doing that show and, um, you know, maybe if someday we are independently wealthy or something like that, I guess just to stick with the uh, theme of talking about independently wealthy things, I guess, I don't know. Um, then I would, uh, then I would, um, I think we'd probably do the real fish talk again, but right now it's. We're, we're never planning on doing it ever again, just because um, we are basically just losing a ton of time and money, <laughs> basically. It was costing a lot of money to do it, and uh, it was taking a ton of time, and uh, I think we're using our time more effectively now uh, in producing you know, it, you know, know, videos on our own channels and stuff like that, which I, I think it's come along pretty well, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited, you know what I mean? Uh, completely understand. I'm in the same situation waiting on ground to thaw for mine. Uh, we have koi and aquarium staging for the ponds. That's awesome. That is super awesome. I love that. I love to hear that. Um, luckily up here in Western Washington, we have one of the premier koi places, um, to go to with the breeders, the raising rearing koi uh, koi.com is here and um i shot a video there a while ago and i do plan to go back and shoot some more videos because springtime is a coming which is going to be koi time which means it's going to go out there and go out there in the sunshine and look at some cool koi so i have plans on going back out there and uh, the welcome mat i'm sure uh as far as i know has been laid out and they're into it uh, zombie drummer says, uh, real fish talk is my favorite fish content on the internet. <laughs> well, you know, like I said, um, you know, if we get to a point where we can, you know, iron out a day to do it again at some point in time, who knows? I don't know. You know, I really don't know. We might, but there's no plans to start that show back up at this point <clears throat> at this juncture, but watch my channel, watch Corey's channel. And there's a good chance you probably see us do stuff together because it does happen. And watch this show because Corey may or may not be a guest someday. And uh, to be brutally honest with you, the weather really got in the way of uh, possibly having Corey come on here as a guest. You guys know we got guests sometimes. and I'd love to have a guest every time. I would love to have a guest every time I do this show, but... Um, it is really hard to try and schedule people to be able to uh, get the, the time. You know what I mean? Uh, Nebraska says, I wish to be financial financially independently. <laughs> uh, Christina Parker says, that is super sad. Um, well, here's the thing. You know, um, like like I said, I mean, it's it's not sad because we're still friends. We still, we're still going to do videos. We still do work together and stuff like that. Um you know, like I said, watch this channel, watch Corey's channel, and we'll probably be on together again before you know it and stuff like that. We probably will go traveling, stuff like that. But, uh, you know, the American Gardeners 
the Aquatic Gardeners Association, the AGA convention, is a perfect example. You guys can actually come and meet both of us uh, at that if you want to. Um, that's going to be a good that's a good example right there of something that's um, um, coming up where we'll both be at it. Um, Lori's here saying hi all. Did I miss the lilies? No, they're right there in the video, and um, they're doing pretty good. I have to admit. I, man, I thought they were going to die because I was like, oh man, they're not doing well. And then, uh, I got some patience and I just relaxed. And then the next thing you know, that, that one little pot split into tons of them. Uh, James Leister says, I want to see the real fish talk Thai chicken salad throwdown, uh, between you and Dean from one offhand comment Corey made last year. Um, I have been talking uh, I've been messaging with Dean a little bit. Um, we will be probably doing something at some point in time. I don't know. We haven't ironed anything out, so um, I don't know when that'll be. But Dean and I will be doing some stuff fairly soon. We've both just been like, yeah, man, we got to do that. And it's like, yeah, man, I'm super busy. And he's like, yeah, I'm super busy too. Oh, you know, so um, we will figure it out. We will cook some stuff. We will make some videos and uh, it should be good. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, just so everybody knows, there's like, there's no hard feelings. I'm always, Corey and I are up always hanging out. It's not like any kind of bad deal. It just, we had to straight up do the pragmatic, like, man, this is costing a lot to be able to do this because not even the monetary cost, it's just that it was taking us a whole entire day. And in the meantime, while that whole entire day went by, none of the other stuff <laughs> that, that, uh, that we were supposed to be getting accomplished was getting accomplished so then we'd end up like oh then the next day we'd be like twice as busy you know when we were trying to do our own stuff and you know now i have a baby you can probably hear her having a bit of a freak out in the background she's teething so life is hard right now three months in and already teething and having a hard time um and um so Wait, what happened? What was I talking about? I started thinking about my baby teething. Um, but we just have, we just both just have a lot going on. Corey's business is, uh, he's very busy with his business. He's got a lot of stuff happening. And uh, like I said, you never know. Maybe, I don't know, maybe someday we'll, we'll start it back up again, but there are no plans to do it. And it's, like I said, it's not a bad, there's no bad feelings about it. It's not like anybody got pissed off or anything like that. It just, we had to break it down brass tacks and just be like, man, we both just got work to do. We got to go do the work. So um, we both just kind of went back to, um, you know, we were like, all right, yeah, we both just got work to do and we got a ton of stuff to do. So let's just go get that done instead of um, leaving stuff on the, on the back burner while we do this project. You know, if that project had taken off, I bet you we'd still be doing it. You know, but looking at the analytics after doing 50 episodes, it was like, you know, so that's kind of really what it boiled down to. Uh, Mr. Stewart says, what plant is the arrow pointing to? I'm having a massive brain fart right now as to this guy. Hold on. Let me, Ooh, hold on. I got, I think I have, um. I think I still have notes in my phone that, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Samsung notes. Oh, snap. You guys are super lucky. Do, 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 Now I'm wondering if, hold on. Let me see here for a second. I'm trying to remember the name of it and I think I got it right. No. Uh, Hello. Oh, man. I was right. I should have just said it. Uh, it's Limnophila aromatica, uh, which is a very interesting plant. Um, the one I got here is, uh, is not displaying any of the pink that it would normally have on it. And I'll give you the spelling right here. Kind of a weird plant. Uh, it has these little kind of sawtoothy like slightly sawtoothy leaves and stuff like that. Um, but it's definitely an interesting plant. It does grow strangely. Um, the very tops of it typically has a little bit of red, but um, this variety doesn't, which is 
fine. Uh, that's basically just a, a varietal. Um, this is supposedly supposed to be the mini kind, but as we can see, it's definitely not doing any mini action in there. Uh, so, you know, toss your hands up a little bit, wave your hands in the air, and um, wave them around like you just don't care. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I see that Boost Plant carries it for $18 a bunch. Whoa. I didn't realize it was that expensive. Maybe I should be propagating it more. If it's that expensive, maybe maybe we could become independently wealthy from... No, that's not... That's weird. Hold on here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hold on a second. Uh, but yeah, so um, boost plant. Like I said, boost plant seems to have it, but theirs looks like to be the wide leaf version. Yeah, it looks to be like the uh, the wide leaf version of it, and with the red, they're saying that theirs has the red. Um, mine is not. Mine is supposed to be mini. But it's not. Either way. Okay. Sorry. I got... I start looking up Wikipedia stuff and I get totally spaced out during the show. And people are trying to listen to a show. You know. Uh, let me put the arrow over here on some Ludwigia. Repens. That's a basic plant. Anybody can get that one. Um, Mickey Sioux says, can you think of a fish you would go after? Go after Ender Fry, but would leave cherry shrimp alone. Oh, so it would go eat Endler Fry, but leave cherry shrimps alone. No, I cannot. No, I can't think of any fish that would do that. Any fish that would eat other fish, but leave shrimp alone. That's weird. Because any fish that would eat other fish, basically, like, if something would fit in its mouth, they'd eat it. And that would include shrimp, I think, you know? <clears throat> uh, Mellow Moogle says propagate that and some Java moss and rake in the money believe it or not I have a plan for the Java moss I can't tell you what it is though uh, Eurobest says oh I caught it tail end probably but dang it that's what happens when you're the cook and it's dinner time that's right I'm the cook and it's not dinner time yet but we're coming up on it and I'm gonna have to get some uh, some dinner ready for my lady Connor Shipley says, thoughts on duckweed. Uh, I personally like duckweed. I think duckweed is a, a really cool and quite interesting plant. I definitely use it as an indicator plant. Um, I, I mentioned this in one of my newer videos that uh, I talk about algae, letting me know what's going on with the tank, the health of a tank and stuff like that, uh, whether or not I need to add fertilizer or not. You know, um, duckweed, I put right into that category. It will let me know what's going on with an aquarium, especially if I, because I, I, all my sumps have duckweed in it. So anybody that's wondering whether or not I have duckweed in my systems, I do in all of my sumps. And it's also one of those things that keeps duckweed out of my display tank. Um, the sump just naturally grabs all of the duckweed and it just ends up in the sump. You know what I mean? So, um, it, uh, I guess that's another advantage that we could put onto the sump check mark. Awesome. Keeps all of the dark weed in the sump, but the, uh, the duck weed's a great indicator plant to let you know what's going on. Um, if nitrates are too high or too low, or you don't have enough fertilizer or too much light or any of that kind of stuff, um, Oh, candy overhauls has got to go because there's too much buffering. All right. Sad to see you go, candy. But uh, duckweed I find to be a very useful plant for a lot of those, for a lot of the reasons that I just talked about. Uh, but it gives me a great insight into my aquarium um, without having to get out the, the chemicals. I don't have to get in any chemicals and do any testing because um, I noticed that if I have, you know, too much going into the system, the duckweed will start to grow all crazy, help kind of balance it out a little bit, kind of drag that back a little bit, you know, chew up some of the ammonia and, you know, maybe spare nitrite and stuff like that that, 
that might be in might somehow have spiked in a system and whatnot and make me go, hmm, all right, I need to go over here and see what's going on. Um, you know, also let me know if it, there's not enough fertilizer in the system. It starts to really yellow out and kind of die out and stuff like that. It's like, oh, this water is like too clean. You know what I mean? I need to add some fertilizer to it because it's going to starve out my plants. My plants are going to start starving out. And duckweed is a great indicator for that because it's such a quickly replicating and growing plant that uh, it really does let you know rather quickly what's going on with the system. Now, the other thing about duckweed that I like to remind people, uh, it is free fish food. Uh, so I can net all of the duckweed out of one of my sumps. I can put it in a dirty old blender, by the way. Don't put it in a brand new blender or your wife just might karate chop you in the neck, okay? Old, maybe a, maybe a blender that you got from Goodwill for like four bucks, you know, you're like, three ninety nine for a blender. I mean, it's yellow, but three ninety nine. I'm gonna buy that. Um, you know, so get that a blender like that. It's got to be an old used one that your your spouse isn't gonna use for uh, Parmesan crusted chicken pasta Alfredo or any of that stuff. Uh, you can run it through the blender, and then you can just dehydrate the liquid. Just a little bit of liquid, a bunch of duckweed grind it up in the blender, lay it out on a tray and let it, um, uh, let it dehydrate. And then you have free fish food with all the, um, you know, beneficial, you know, biological stuff that would have been from, a from a, uh, uh, a healthy tank. And, uh, it's like kind of one of the best fish foods you can, you can find fish or shrimp food. Uh, it works really, really well. Uh, Sam S says, how do you feel about jungle Val? Uh, I feel like jungle Val is just a waste of time and money. Honestly, <laughs> um, people like it cause it grows super fast, but it's an invasive plant. Um, and that's why, um, that's why a lot of cities and States used it for years in, um, erosion control and waterways, because you pretty much can just throw it into a tank with water. And then people are like, look, I can grow plants. You know, like, look how well I can grow plants. I grew jungle Val. And you're like, yeah, you could throw that in a bucket outside behind the garage and come back six weeks later and it'll be full. But there's also a benefit of it doing that because it also encourages people that are like, I can grow plants and they can keep going and learn more about this hobby, the gardening, the indoor gardening in a box full of water, right? Um, and you could, you give you an opportunity to start learning more and stuff to work on, right. And stuff to keep doing. Uh, but it will generally take over a tank, become very, um, ugly. It's hard to trim and maintain, but, um, you know, it's a great plant if you want to do, you know, certain styles of tanks, if you want to do, you know, I was literally talking to Kobe. I think he's going to put, um, Val in one of his aquariums and I was like he's like man I know your opinion on that and I was like well you gotta do you bro you gotta do you um I forget who it was somebody a while back long time ago on the uh the old forums back in the day had posted um some of their jungle Val that they had in this um had like some monster giant tank and um it had grown to nine feet it was nine feet long <laughs> you know and uh, like, man, that will 100% outgrow your aquarium, that's for sure. Jackson's asking, will trimming roots of dwarf water let us kill it? I have a ton that is growing roots to the bottom of my tanks, and I'm already throwing out handfuls of it because of how fast it grows. Um, a little confused by the question, will trimming the roots kill it? Um, typically, no. Typically, trimming roots will inspire more roots to, to grow, <laughs> believe it or not. Um you know, seems, seems like the opposite, right? But it will normally trigger increased root growth, basically. Um, but yes, uh, dwarf water lettuce, you will be throwing out handfuls of it. Um, it is a great plant to start out with. I put it right in there with, um, you know, I put it right in there with the old, uh, jungle valve. It's a great one to start out with. Um, you know, 
as you're a year or two years in kind of deal, you'll probably be like, oh man, I hate this plant. I need to get rid of it. And it just, some plants do have a tendency to just overgrow, you know, they just really do. Like the pogostemon over here, some people have mentioned to me uh, that they're like, man, I'll never do that plant again because it grows like crazy. Hold on, let me spin my arrow around here. That one right. Sorry, wrong pogostemon. We want the pogostemon salatus octopus. I feel like that's a better starting plant. If you're going to start out, um, it fills in really nicely and it's really forgiving to be keep trimming it and keep trimming it and keep trimming it it's great practice too you definitely start learning like oh wait a minute if i trim these plants it starts to grow back like that or it grows back like this um so it's a pretty good one i, I think personally um barbara jackson took out my argentine swords out of my 20 long it was growing about six to eight inches above the tank. Yeah, I have a few plants that do that. Uh, my, you know, in my systems too, they'll grow out of the aquarium if I'm not paying attention. Uh, Tizzle Dexter says, "I'm a suck at this. I killed water lettuce. Uh, don't get discouraged. Just you know, test your water and find out what's going on because you probably, um, you probably just naturally have." water that's different than the parameters that um, water lettuce would want you know i can't remember what it is off the top of my head but they um you know whatever it is like maybe you you know you're lacking something that that it really needs um but it's been a long time since i grew water lettuce so i can't really think of like what the parameters are supposed to be for it uh oh Oh, is it? It was. It was a sneeze. God. I knew that was coming. I should have. I don't know. I don't have a... I don't have any way to, like, cover up my sneeze. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, Bracken can't pay people to take my Pogostem and Stellatus. <laughs> it's such a weed. I take it to the store. Drop it off at a store. They'll take it. Um... Do, 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 do. Uh, Sam was saying, I was thinking about using the Val as a background type of plant. Since you aren't a fan of that, what would you recommend for something to fill up the background of a tall tank? Um, that Pogostemon is pretty good. Um, the Alternanthera Renekii, so this bright red plant over here. This this is a good background plant. The uh, This is a Pogostemon Erectus, that's a great plant for mid-ground, uh, but the red the, the red version of this in the background, that'll grow up as a background plant. Um, these water lilies right here, I'm actually going to be using those as a background plant. This Ludwigia that's right here, that's a great background plant. I have that in my 240 that's built, building in as a, as a background plant. Pretty, pretty darn good. Um, there are a lot. I, I just think that um you know the jungle vow really 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 takes over it really starts to take over these whole areas and um it's kind of a pain to trim the actual blades of it itself oops drop my phone um the actual blades of it itself are a pain to trim and as it sends out these little sh uh, runner shoots um it does become uh quite difficult to trim because you have to trim in the substrate kind of a pain uh Brenda Jackie says, can I add de dechlorinator straight to an aquarium when filling tank with Python type system? Love your show. Keep up the great work. Yeah. What I would do is, um, I would just add, I would just get a scoop, right? I would like get a, like a half gallon or a gallon scoop and add your dechlorinator to that water in that bucket. Then when you start your Python, just dump that in, just make sure you, you do it quickly, you know, like don't, don't put it in the gallon and like leave it there for six hours and then be like, oh yeah, there we go. Um, you basically want to get the water, add the dechlorinator to it, start the python, and then start dropping in some of that uh, water with the dechlorinator in it. Uh, Rexina says, so like any plant can be a background plant. Uh, not any plant, but a lot of plants can. Uh, but for instance, like this crypt, uh, this crypt right here, uh, there's regular bronze and green 
Wen Daddy Eye. Uh, there's the Pink Flamingo. There's some Crypt Nuri right here. Uh, this Styragyne. Not any of those would be good background plants. <laughs> None of those would be any good. Those would all be bad. Um, but, you know, there are a lot of plants that would make good background plants, especially considering, like, they don't need to really grow that tall to be a background plant. I mean, if they grow 10, 12, 14, 16 inches tall, it's plenty tall to be a, a background piece. Uh, ba -ba -ba Mickey's saying, why is my Amazon frog bit rotting in a tank where all the other plants are doing great? It's low tech, mid light, mid fertilizer. Uh, They're not getting drowned. Uh, I am desperate. Um, Frogbit can be a little bit finicky because, um, you know, it's always sitting at the top. You know, it's floating at the top of the tank. Uh, its roots can become damaged. Uh, maybe it's not, it may, maybe it's got too much light hitting it. Maybe you may, you're probably, uh, but most commonly, what you're probably missing is some kind of specific fertilizer that it needs. Um, you know, and I say fertilizer, like might be better to say nutrient. Uh, there's probably a specific nutrient that it's missing. And um, that's probably what's going on. So uh, I would figure, try to figure out a pretty comprehensive fertilizer that you can um, dose to the tank. Uh, I don't recommend people to generally get into dry ferts um, because it's really easy to screw those up. Um, some simple... Uh, Slight mistakes in measurement can just really throw the whole thing out of whack. That's why I recommend people to, to get like Easy Green uh, or Thrive. Those are two really good uh, brands that I recommend people to get. A really easy to dose, easy, comprehensive um, fertilizer that's pretty uh, readily available too. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Somebody was asking. Do, 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 do. Somebody was asking about rinsing stratum, I think. Where did that go? Let me see. Oh, there it is. Seth says, should I rinse stratum? Was thinking about just using an old hang on back filter with filter floss to clear the water. Uh, I have never needed to rinse stratum. I don't, there's really no reason to rinse it, uh, but Yes, an old hang on back with some filter floss will clear the water right up if you did somehow make it a little bit cloudy. Uh, I really have never had to rinse it. Ronnie Miller's asking, can I use a Fluval 3.0 on a low-tech tank? Yes, that is one of the reasons that uh, I like the 3.0. You can um, set the timer on it exactly how you want. You can set the ramp up and ramp down times on um, five of the basically the types of LEDs that they have in there. So they have different uh, color spectrum LEDs. So you could uh, you could go all red, you go all pink, all white, all blue, you know what I mean? Like, uh, so really um, a really modular light that works really well. So I definitely recommend that light for sure. You can go, you know, high tech, whatever you want to call it. You can go high light, low light, medium light, any of that kind of stuff. You can set it how you want it. So that's one of the big, big, big reasons I like it. Art's asking, could you explain why you like sumps? I have a bunch of sump videos, so I'm, I don't think I'm going to go into why. The downfalls of having a sump in a planted tank. Um, I Cost, I guess. That might be the one downfall. Cost more, I guess, but not really. Um... I don't know. I, I don't think there's any downfalls for sumps, honestly. That's why I run sumps on all my tanks. Uh, except for my uh, quarantine tank has a hang on back. Aqua Clear. I like those Aqua Clear filters. They are awesome possum neato mosquito. So if you want a hang on back uh, style filtration device for your aquarium, I would go with an Aqua Clear. Um, I don't know if anybody needs a link or not. Let me know. If you do. Oh my God. We lost a patronizer during the show. That's new. I don't know. Guess I pissed somebody off. Ooh, lost a patronizer. I hope they're doing okay. And I hope it's not like, you know, I hope it's not like somebody got sick or something. Cause that's the worst. I hate hearing that. Like 
somebody loses their job or something that I hate hearing that. That's hardcore. Uh, Connor Shipley, smallest tank you've had a sump on. Um, 7.9 gallons, I think. Five gallon. No, I had one on a 5.5. I had a sump on a 5.5. Yeah. Um, I think that's the smallest. I might have gone smaller than that, but I just the one pops into my head. A 5.5 gallon had a sump on it because I'm crazy. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Honestly, guys, I'm getting super duper hungry and we don't have any super chats hanging so i don't need to answer any of that uh we got three new members during the show so that's not bad that's pretty good snowflake 3981 brand new member uh the zombie drummer and mike's tetras all brand new members during the show that is awesome. Thank you very much, you guys. Um, trying to build those numbers up so we can do the uh, the members only stream here in a couple of weeks. Uh, that's going to be fun. That's going to be a fun stream because I, I think I, we can go kind of no holds barred. I don't know. I'll ask you guys. Uh, maybe we'll just go completely nuts and act ridiculous during the, <laughs> during the member stream. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly how we're going to do it. Maybe we'll do it as a Google Hangout so people could pop on. I, I'm undecided. I'm undecided at this point how we're going to do the uh, the members only thingy. And uh, we'll just go that route when it comes to it. Uh, Critter Girl, do you have a link uh, to a video on plumbing a sump to an established aquarium, putting a sump behind, beside my aquatic turtle tank? Um, I have uh, some plumbing videos and stuff like that, yeah, for the sumps, but I don't have links to my own videos on here. But, um, yeah, you can you can look through my playlists and stuff like that. I've got 940 videos up, so maybe something in there is helpful to you. <laughs> um, let's see. Have you tried running refugiums in your freshwater sumps? I'd imagine that moss or guppy grass would be cool. I run refugiums on all of my freshwater sumps. Yes, I grow plants in my freshwater sumps also. Uh, but I want to say thanks to everybody coming all the way out on a Wednesday. Uh, 100 and 150, 160 of you watching. So uh, I do expect to see 160 likes, right? Isn't that how this goes? There should be 160 likes. If the 160 people of you are here, there should be 160 likes, right? Is that how that works? Uh, maybe you don't like hitting the like button and you'd like to swim, spin by the old Patreon. Uh, if you haven't been over to the Patreon page, uh, I don't know. There is some kind of exclusive stuff there. The main exclusivity is the basically you can post on the community uh, posts and then we talk about that stuff on uh uh, on Friday's show, we talk about that stuff on Friday's show. Uh, you can post pictures up on there. You could probably post a video. I don't, I don't even know, but if you have questions, complaints, concerns, any of that kind of stuff. You can definitely post it on there. We talk about it during the show on Friday. Uh, so just to remind people, if you want to get your posts in for Friday, throw them up there and we'll be putting them into the show. Uh, critter girl says, thanks for the response. Uh, yes, I do have, uh, some plumbing videos and stuff. I just, I don't have links. I wish I could just quickly shoot you links, but I got a ton of videos up, so feel free to check those out. Um, this show is Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's when it kicks off. Sometimes it's an hour long, sometimes it's an hour and a half, and sometimes it's 4,000 hours long, right? You never know. You never know how long it's going to be because I don't know. I just don't know how long it's going to be, right? <laughs> but... Um, you know, I want to say thanks to all the members. Thanks to everybody for being super awesome. It's uh, 2019 is going to be pretty exciting, and uh, uh, hopefully we just keep rocking and rolling into the future. Into the future. This weekend's going to be crazy. Let's get some filming. Come on, Oregon. Come on out. You know. Uh, and I'll be uh, seeing you all later. Bobby's Bob. Bobby's Bob's Basement. It says see you Saturday in Eugene. Awesome. That's going to be great. I'm going to love to see you guys. Uh, in Eugene and Oregon and all of Eugene, Oregon and all the places I'm going to be wherever in Oregon. I'm going to talk to y'all later.